Okay, so let's cover single independence and how to develop those. This is where you need to spend a lot of time, a lot of patient time with a mirror. And the process kind of goes like this. You're able to bring the mallets up like so. And then the idea is you rotate around this other mallet in a way. And you can see that my, my pinky is rotating up. Okay, so it's like that turning the doorknob motion. But the key is that I just push toward this mallet. And what happens when I do that is this other mallet stays in place. I just push forward with my thumb. I can either think of pushing straight forward like that, or I can think of pushing straight to the side like that. But you can see that produces, it makes the other mallet wobble. So instead I push toward the mallet exactly. And that's where you get that independence from. And eventually you'll be able to isolate that perfectly so that that mallet can just sit and spin. That's just a thought process. What you actually want to do is get a good rotation regardless of what this guy out here does. So when you're working that stroke, you start off by fully isolating like this and learning how to push in the correct direction with the hand. But later on, you just go for a good rotation that feels good. And you allow for some noise to happen in the, in the other mallet. When you're working in the other direction, look at how radically my wrist breaks. It's a huge pop like that. A pop toward the pinky. See if you can do this motion without the mallets. And then you would try it with the mallets. And you end up with this. And again, same idea. You just check out what it looks like for this hand to rotate around that mallet. Right here. Rotating around the mallet. And that direction, like, I rotate perpendicular to the mallet, like this. That's what happens. It's a perpendicular rotation. Let's check it in the other direction, too. Yeah, I'd say the hand motion is a perpendicular motion. Basically, I mean... So that's a great thing to know is that when you want to do an independent stroke, it is perpendicular like this. That's how the hand rotates, you know, around that mallet, that other mallet. The angle is that direction like this. I, I can't say that it's a, entirely perpendicular. I can't say that it's 90 degrees like this. I would say it's something more like that. So you can think about it as a perpendicular hand rotation, but the thought of your push, the thinking, is out in this cone, out here, toward the mallet. Same thing with the other direction. I'm twisting my hand perpendicular, but I'm pushing the mallet down. I don't know if that makes any sense. You, It's just something you do and it's a feeling and you check your results with the independence of the non-playing mallet. Okay, let's talk single alternating strokes where you're going back and forth. There are different schools of thought on this. You'll notice, I think some of the West Coast groups, their picture in between the strokes will tend to be, you will see some, like the picture in the middle will, will change. You'll see different angles. I guess some of the gro groups from the center of the country do like, the picture is here between every stroke. And that looks like this. That's like, it's a single independent stroke, but I'm adding like some arm to it. And then I just come to the top again. And I have to make a decision about whether I'm gonna play a strict stroke like that with no bouncing. Okay, those I would call like kind of strict. Like that. Um, if I add a bounce, it looks like this. And you can see that while I play this pair of mallets, all the mallets move like this. Single alternating strokes can be executed in a fully strict manner like this, or as a block motion with an extra interior push like that. So I can do a block, or I can do a block plus a little push that looks like this. And that way all the mallets are moving, but I'm adding that little rotation I learned before to only have two of the mallets play. So I always
always return to this eyebrows level position. You'll find that some groups from other parts of the country will, they, I don't know how to do it though. They, um, they introduce, not, I, I don't want to call it a seesaw because it's different from a beginner's seesaw. A beginner's seesaw goes like this. They go like, and the reason it looks like that is because they haven't learned to rebound the stroke. Some of the, the groups, they are rebounding, but they're just prepping the next mallet. It's like a lift. I don't know quite how to execute it, so I'll just include a clip. Um, okay, so that's it.